2014 was a very different time on the YouTube landscape. PewDiePie, Smosh, Epic Rap Battles of History, and even Skyda's Minecraft were dominating the platform. We make it look easy. The apocalypse wasn't a thought in anyone's minds. The most viewed videos were Super Bowl ads and music videos peddled on Vivo channels, a far cry from what we see on today's YouTube. Potato quality videos with borderline deafness inducing audio was much, much more acceptable. With this sea of lower quality viral content would emerge a purely unique artist and internet sensation with the moniker of Ice JJ Fish. Baby, would you come my way? Born Daniel McCloyd on July 30th, 1994 in Chicago, Illinois, not much is known about Ice JJ Fish's early life, as it would seem he's tried to keep most of his personal life and past off the internet. Daniel would start his channel on May 12th, 2007. His first videos were original rap songs in the typical vein of most gangster rappers of the time, often on the subject of getting higher than an airplane and telling Shorty to back that ass up. Often Daniel would upload remixes of popular hit songs by the likes of Frank Ocean, Future, Drake, and even Beyonce. The only remaining song uploaded on his channel from this era, titled Rawest of Them All, featured a clear preview of things to come with a signature fire high-pitched singing. I'm gonna go ahead and sing this song right. It's called The Rawest of Them All. <laughs> From what we can gather from the sole interview of Ice on YouTube, prior to this moment of virality, Ice lived in poverty, sleeping on a bed that was so small that his feet hung off of it, and he needed to be curled up to even fit. When Daniel saw his first mini viral hit on the floor get 30,000 views in less than a day, he knew it was time to quit his job, which was washing dishes, to pursue his true artistic calling. Man, when I saw my, my uh, video get like 30,000 views in like 10 hours, like, I knew if only Daniel had been prepared for what would come next. That 30,000 view count video would quickly double, triple, and continuously exponentially grow to millions upon millions of views. In 2014, he began to take his career seriously and signed a three-video deal with a San Antonio-based production company called That Raw. His first professional music video, titled No Topping You, features him dramatically lit, shirtless, and black and white, getting rather touchy with an Instagram model named Jessica Rico. Ice JJ Fish clearly lift weights based on his shredded physique in this video, okay? He's hitting it hard. He actually is kind of, uh, based. Next up, That Raw would help Daniel produce the viral hit video that would change his life. On the Floor would absolutely blow up. The video would feature his signature bizarre vocals, along with him using truly fascinating dance moves to riz up a Latina gat known as Karen V. Karen is still active today on social media where she makes relationship advice TikTok content and smells her boyfriend's clothes. So freaking zaced. The internet would lose their collective minds over this video. We can see that after only one year of uploading, On the Floor had 34 million views, amassing nearly 500,000 subscribers for Daniel. This is impressive even by today's standards. This is like huge. It's something about the girl. Following his newfound fame came Daniel Tosh with his highly popular comedy show where he would roast viral internet trends on Comedy Central. Tosh would interview Ice JJ Fish asking questions like, do you hit it raw? Are you high right now? And whether or not being light skinned is a blessing or a curse in the black community. Tosh is notably very, very edgy throughout the segment, indicating that this truly took place in a different landscape. I can't imagine this being on TV right now. This is the only time we hear about the origins of the name Ice JJ Fish. Daniel would go on to explain to Tosh that he simply put ice in front of the name of his favorite fried chicken restaurant in Chicago, JJ Fish. Truly a visionary of our time. Ice would also express that you gotta have a pretty girl in every video and that his impressive physique was not built in the gym, but by salads, the use of his juicer, and of course, JJ Fish's fried chicken. Daniel actually seemed to have a great time on Tosh, even though he's pretty clearly being trolled and made fun of throughout. His positive attitude and constant laughter at Tosh's questions really shows his likable, endearing personality. The end of his Tosh.0 appearance features him performing a version of his first upload, Rawest of the Mall, with a professional acapella group where he runs around on stage shirtless, thrusting at the sole female singer, showing he's very clearly in on the bit. This appearance heavily muddies the water on whether or not Daniel's music is serious or just a massive, very well orchestrated troll project. How long have you been making music? Really, I really started like on my senior year in high school. How old are you now? 19. Okay, so you're just one year out of high school. Yeah. Oh, do you miss that high school pussy? Oh, no. Oh, I miss it. That's why I still, every now and then, I, I, I take a dip. <laughs> what you mean you take a dip? But he would later clarify on YouTube his work is not a joke, expressing anger at those who call him a comedian. It's not a joke. There's no comedy about this shit. This is not a comedian channel. As you see, it's been like five years or four years since the On The Floor video dropped. Have you seen any other f***ing videos that look any similarity to, to any of this sh since 
since then, no, it's not a joke. If you think it's a joke about this time, you need to go to the fucking hospital. Literally, something fucking wrong with you. The video following the viral hit on the floor titled Like I Want To features a world star hip hop graphic in the intro indicating Ice was getting industry eyes on him for better or for worse. But it's possible this was just pulled offline and pasted in for clout. It might not even be real. The only articles available about this online were mostly clouding on Ice and calling him it's important to note that Ice JJ Fish seems to be a little more self-aware on some of the following music videos, like Getting Money, where he can be seen rapping outside the fish market with a shark costume on, with Fish Nation crudely drawn on the costume. Later on in the video, he's also seen acting out what seems to be a parody of, like, iced-out rappers in the studio, and also holding up a cardboard sign seemingly parodying a homeless rapper. His next, more seemingly self-aware video, Got That, shows him unsuccessfully rizzing up a bikini-clad gat on the beach, only to look around for witnesses and promptly pick her up, abducting her from the scene as two large men, presumably her boyfriends, frantically search for her. The video ends with Daniel at the bar, ogling at a new shorty, only to be out by another woman. This video ends with Daniel hanging his head in defeat. Fan favorite Ice JJ Fish certified baddie Karen V would even make a return for one more Christmas-themed love song. This Christmas would show Ice epic style stunting on a familiar face, a great move for his fans that remembered her from the legendary On the Floor video months prior. <laughs> In 2015, he would make another appearance on primetime television, but not on Tosh. This time, it was on Nick Cannon's comedy freestyle rap show, Wild and Out. This show was a breeding ground for amateur comedians to get a chance in the limelight, similar to how SNL gave many people their start to their respective careers. Timothy De La Ghetto, Cat Williams, King Bach, Mikey Day, who later became an SNL cast member, Pete Davidson, Kevin Hart, Akash Singh, and even Matt Reif were all, at one point, featured cast members on seasons of the show. Even Ricegum was a cast member on their 13th season, funnily enough. Ice J.J. Fish was only a guest for one single episode, which appears to actually be an instance of lost media, as it seems the episode from season 7, featuring him and Ty Dolla Sign, is not listed on Amazon Prime Video and Paramount Plus, and there are only very short clips uploaded to YouTube. A heavily audio distorted version is available on Daily Motion, likely attempting to circumvent copyright, but it's like basically fing unwatchable. Let's hear it for the black team. From the short clips we can see, it would seem they brought on Daniel only to be a metaphorical punching bag for that night's episode. A cast member known as Chico Bean roast Daniel, basically calling him tone deaf to his face. It's unknown if Ice was part of the bit this time, as he seems to not take it as well as he normally does. He seems like actually a little bit hurt. Hey, I'm proud of your success. I'm glad you got your ground right. But do you not know that this is what you sound like? I would, yeah. I would. Leave my boy alone. Following his wild and out appearance, Daniel would next star in an episode of Loiter Squad, what they describe as a reality prank whatever show on Adult Swim featuring rappers Tyler the Creator, Earl Sweatshirt, and other members of the rap collective Odd Future. Ice is featured in a few skits called Peach Sandwich, Ghost Vocalist, and I Just Bought a Bugatti. They parodied modern rappers in a very over-the-top fashion. Meanwhile, Daniel's vocal contribution was really the main punchline of all the sketches. <laughs> Funnily enough, Daniel would get to star with presumably one of his idols, Frank Ocean, in Peach Sandwich. What the f is this? Yeah. You think you Frank Ocean or something? Wrong, you not. You and Brown and need to make my peaches sandwich. Yeah, make us peaches Come sandwich. Make us peaches Brown. sandwich. For reasons unknown, Frank Ocean's face is censored. The internet speculates as part of the joke, as Frank Ocean would be incredibly famous at this point. Daniel appears rather stiff and uncomfortable in this particular appearance, possibly due to being surrounded by famous artists. Many comments suggest that Ice JJ Fish doesn't seem to understand that it's a joke. The truth is, this appearance would only further obfuscate whether or not Ice was aware of why he was being asked to do these guest starrings. It definitely wasn't to showcase his singing skill, as this one was seemingly designed to like treat him like a punching bag. It was particularly humiliating. But many aspiring artists such as Daniel will jump at any chance to be on live television with such famous artists, no matter the cost.
Around 2016, Ice JJ Fish's music videos had quite a noticeable drop off in quality. The next uploads we would get were all filmed in what seems to be the same location, with very little production value and mostly just Daniel dancing or singing along to his tracks. It seems he was unable to get a video production company on board this time around, despite growing his audience to quite an impressive level. I think it's obvious to most viewers that there was a noticeable drop off in production quality here, from stock transitions to poorly pasted in text. I personally would speculate that Fish himself was producing these videos instead of any company, which is why they have these very cool artistic choices. His final two music videos currently uploaded to his channel, being My Bay and I Want You, feature very visibly uncomfortable baddies. These videos are legitimately painful to watch. In I Want You, the model can be seen like physically recoiling as Daniel gets close to her. Uh, like when he touches her face, she's like not into it. Baby, 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 no, I want you. It's also funny that the aspect ratio changes randomly throughout the video. It seems to be a side effect of Daniel's, you know, production skills or lack thereof. This would be the end of Daniel's foray into music videos. And from then on, he would only post songs over static images of album art. Even though Isis had many, many detractors over the years, every video has a significant portion of positive comments, encouraging Daniel for his seemingly unfaltering, no fucks given attitude and work ethic. Many found Daniel's character very endearing, finding a newfound respect for him pushing through all the online hate and just continuing to upload his music despite it all. All. There's something almost nostalgic and charming about watching Ice break it down in public with his insane yet confident moves, which fans have dubbed his infamous fish and chips dance. In the hundreds of songs Daniel has put out, it's not hard to see the potential in his abilities. He's actually more than capable of writing a catchy original melody. If you're not careful, you may catch yourself humming along to the earworm tier melodies throughout your day, for better or for worse. Many fans express in comments how Daniel could have easily had a great career as a songwriter in the hands of a good producer or with a good singer. A channel under the name Ice JJ Fish Dose would upload a professionally tuned, cleaned up version of On the Floor around the same time of the original's release, labeling it an alternate version. In order to effectively pull this off, the person making this version would need access to the entire project file pieced out with the instrumental and Daniel's isolated vocals. It's impossible to prove this isn't just a completely remade version of the song, or even if it is Daniel's vocals at all, as it's unknown if Ice JJ Fish has any actual affiliation with the channel. It's hard to believe that Daniel's vocals could even be treated with such a professional touch, as they almost seem too good in this version. Something about you, girl. Just makes my head wanna twirl. Fans would leave many comments on this alternate version, highlighting how great the song sounds with professional treatment and mixing. But the more likely reality is that this is just a fan-made project, posing as Daniel and trying to capitalize off of his buzz related to the On the Floor video, while actually trying to, you know, ask the question, what if somebody with a little bit more skill or production value or somebody with a better voice was making his songs? There does seem to be an overall significant difference in audio quality between the two versions, with Daniel's original song sounding greatly compressed, even at the highest streaming quality. This alternate version gave fans something valuable it's insight on what could be. Perhaps the greatest tragedy of Daniel's career is his potential and his failure to have it realized. 2017 would mark a fascinating arc in Daniel's story. The rapper Lil Yachty would blow up during this time period. Born Miles Parks McCollum in August 1997 near Atlanta, Lil Yachty would drop out of college at Alabama State University in 2015 to pursue his music career. He moved to New York City and even worked at McDonald's to make some additional income towards his investment. After a few viral hits off his first few singles and EPs, Miles would release his debut full-length record, Teenage Emotions, which would debut at number 5 on the US Billboard 200 charts, despite middling critical reception and a ton of criticism for all of the mumble rap adjacent artists such as him. It would seem the world wasn't ready for Yachty's direction, yet he would prove to be ahead of his time, with many rappers following suit and gaining massive success off the same style. Yachty would go on to achieve tens of millions of listeners, hundreds of millions of plays, and even had a hand in writing the massively successful City Girls hit Act Up. Miles grinded for his place in the industry and surely looks back on his time working at McDonald's as a symbol of how far he's come. Ice JJ Fish, however, was not particularly impressed at Lil Yachty's prolific rise. Daniel would go on to accuse Miles of stealing his entire sound. He copied my whole flow! Oh, word for shit. word, bar for bar! Starting Twitter beef that confused the trolls and the fans alike. The court of public opinion would deem this claim far off from reality and proceed to clown on Daniel for his bizarre, unsubstantiated claims. Yachty only addressed this beef one time, simply replying to Ice with laughing, crying emojis. This is the end of Daniel and Lil Yachty's interactions. It's unclear if Ice genuinely believed these claims or if he was simply trying to capitalize off a rapper who had a lot of eyes looking his way, but needless to say, it didn't exactly go in his favor. Daniel proceeded from there with his career 
year, releasing the single Get Lost shortly before putting out his album Lil JJ Fish, clearly referencing the beef between him and Lil Yachty. The album cover would even be referential, featuring Daniel Photoshop with Lil Yachty's well-known hairstyle, the beaded red braids. These particular songs are much closer to gangster rap than his typical love song type R&B tracks, with excessively raunchy lyrics and songs like The Bone, or Just Like That. And yes, The Bone is about exactly what you would think. And he also rapped about flexing his jewelry and wealth in the song Ice On Me. These songs are some of Ice's best work. While it continues to be a mystery if Daniel is serious about his music, they contain some of the funniest lyrics, beats, and one-liners, with lines like, bad bit, I'm grabbing on her ass. Owie. It's easy to see how fans enjoyed this side of Ice. There are additionally catchy parts in these songs, showing off more of Ice's poorly executed yet still existent creativity. Unfortunately for Ice's newer fans, he seems to have disavowed these songs, even apologizing for all of his raunchy stuff, culminating in Daniel removing all the videos related to this record. Luckily, this short album remains on streaming services like Spotify, unlike the vast majority of his records, which are only uploaded on his channel in pieces. So why was Daniel trying to distance himself from some of his most enjoyable material? If he thought that this story couldn't get any more bizarre or unpredictable. Uh, well, it, it, it's about to get weirder, okay? It is. 2019 marked the strangest moment in the history of ICE. Daniel would disappear for a couple of years and return mid-2019, publicly denouncing his former gangster lifestyle past and announcing his new top priority, Jesus Christ himself. During his break, Daniel had found solace and faith, leaving his daily marijuana use and promotions of a hood lifestyle in the past for good. But he wasn't quite ready to hang it up when it came to music. He would put out a full-length record called C6, which appears to be an another case of lost media, excluding one track called Safe On Me. Daniel would show his work ethic had not changed along with his shift in values. He would release three more EPs called My First Love, The Beginning, and The Gospel, all of which showed Ice was strictly making love songs or gospel songs, expressing his love for God and all the joys that his faith has brought him. In songs like I Don't Deserve You and I Pray to Jesus, Daniel can be heard clearly showing remorse for the themes in his earlier music. Sorry for breaking all your rules, being a recurring lyric in the latter mentioned track. This shift in music was shocking to say the least. A far cry from lines describing busting that pussy wide open and how shoddy give good brain on prior songs like Get Lost. Even if he lost some fans by switching to a highly contentious brand, the strangely catchy nature of Daniel remained. Like he's still, he's still Ice JJ Fish. He's still f***ing in there. 2020 would unbelievably be even more insane in the timeline for Daniel. This year, Ice would release two albums. The first, Emotions For You, would include strictly endearing love songs like him and Kanye and the painfully catchy Give Me A Chance. The second, being Jesus is the way, with on the nose track titles like Praise the Lord and I Found Jesus, expressed how faith was instrumental to his lifestyle change. The comments would continue to be awestruck to Daniel's sheer determination over the years to keep pushing the wheel, while complimenting him for actually improving his vocal ability. Perhaps the metaphorical armor of Christ protected him from the health fire of hate comments perpetually thrown his way. But a few comments from Christians even send respect his way for speaking the truth of God's teachings. While the chronically online tend to label all Christians as radical zealots, bent on interfering with the general population's lifestyle choices, this claim is usually based on a minority of the loudest reactionaries and their intentionally outrageous statements online. But Ice was different, right? He was just a guy hanging out, chilling, going his own way. Surely he wouldn't be one of those loud reactionaries who passed judgment on those he didn't know. Or at the very least, he wouldn't just be someone who... I don't know, is like homophobic? Is homophobic the term to use here? I guess, I don't know. I don't really like to use that term. I feel like it's always used by cringe people. Well, I'll let you guys decide. Fortunately, or unfortunately for some, 2020 would have Daniel tweeting multiple times daily, sharing his rather harsh opinions on all things from COVID conspiracy theories, gay people, masturbation, and even our impending war with China, claiming that the world would be nuked in two years at maximum. According to ICE, Donald Trump would be our last president and be the symbol of the United States' inevitable destruction, even if he thought Trump was funny. Between his unhinged rants, Daniel would make sure to keep his followers informed on various fast food trends, including his joy at KFC bringing back their wings until Wendy's pretzel bun was fire. Between all the madness, Ice would keep us updated on the status of his braces, with him finally getting them off and celebrating his straight teeth with a selfie, which went on to be his most liked tweet to date. Although some fans would miss his signature tooth gap and severe overbite, most would join Daniel in his celebration, with him actually claiming that 2020 was the best year of his life so far. At the same time, Ice JJ Fish would share videos of him singing new songs, as well as front-facing car videos of him advising people to improve embrace God, and leave degeneracy behind.
He'd finish out 2020 commentating on the election between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, making several big predictions, none of which would actually come true. Ice JJ Fish would release one last album up to today, and a few singles as recently as December 23rd of 2023. God's Perfect Timing would be more of the same of Daniel's R&B gospel fusion, but it unfortunately had a much weaker reception than his other work, with songs struggling to crack five figures in terms of streams. Really, 2021 to the modern day would see Ice continually posting rabid tweets, face cam videos centering around Christianity, usually with a condescending judgmental tone, and even low-res, live, laugh, love-ask memes with the goal of owning the non-believers. This can only be described as what the youth would call speaking Japanese. Ice rants are riddled with grammatical errors and made-up words, adding to the comedy that a man who was formerly singing about his bone is trying to educate others on Christian doctrines. When describing how events in the Bible correlate with real-world events, Ice can be heard combining the words correlate and align into Coraline, a word that exists in no English dictionary. In another rant, Daniel tells his followers that no such thing as easy belief is ism. There are very few comments even attempting to correct or point out Daniel's strange word choices. Like, almost nobody seemed to notice this. This may be more of an insult to his follower base than to Ice himself, but it's safe to say that Ice was likely not changing a lot of minds with these inflammatory rants, with many comment sections inundated with refutations of many more of his wild statements. Even if there was actually some good intentions in his videos, like encouraging fans to abandon destructive addictions in exchange for a relationship with God, his depressive delivery likely got the message lost. Ice would even attract the ire of Christians by stating that most Christians don't truly live as Christians, denouncing so-called half-Christians. On a positive note, Daniel would announce in October of 2022 that he had gotten married. It would seem there truly is someone for everyone. He wants to change the way you think and the way you live. You know, there's freedom from your sin. You ain't gotta be homosexual. <laughs> There is no such thing as easy believicism. Believicism. Now, it's not hard to feel bad for Daniel. At some point, nearly all eyes in the rap community were fixed on his come up and his eventual bizarre crash and burn. There are even moments in his music where there seemed to be some understanding of musicianship. At least some musical talent would be required to get to those ends. Daniel has deleted hundreds of videos over the years for unknown reasons, likely due to copyright purposes because he's used so many unlicensed beats from other artists or possibly due to him disavowing his raunchy past music. An account called Ice JJ Fish Archive on YouTube has made it their mission to archive every single piece of Ice JJ Fish media that has ever existed. Updated as recently as December 30th, the archiver has managed to obtain some truly legendary pieces of Fishverse media. The majority of the lost Seasick record has been found and preserved on the channel, along with music videos for remixes of I Love McConan's Tuesday, and even the original video for fan favorite Get Lost. For the past four years, Ice JJ Fish Archives has obtained 147 pieces of rare Ice JJ Fish clips, songs, and even undocumented mixtapes like Criminal Mind and Dreams Come True. Not all heroes wear capes, but this guy is likely scarred from his level of radioactive Ice JJ Fish exposure from hunting all this down. With time, the whole timeline of the Fish verse might actually be restored. We can only hope that we're treated to more lost media from Daniel's past as time goes on. It very well could get way better or worse from here. Many highly talented musicians fall to the wayside on a yearly basis. Some of my favorite artists that I've heard ever have like less than 10,000 Spotify listeners monthly, right? Could things have been different if Ice took his music making seriously and used a short burst of fame to make an actual career of longevity? in music. We'll never know. But whatever the case, he made an impact. He made a splash. He got over 100 million collective views on his songs. And to me, that's an accomplishment in and of itself. Is Ice an example of how embracing your true self can alienate your fans and implode your career before you even have a chance to shine? Or is he yet another delusional musician destined to suffer from his vain attempts at transcending meme status into musical stardom? Great questions. The only one that I can answer is, uh, well, you didn't ask, but I've been Turkey Tom. Thanks for watching. Until next time, this is the Tom Dark channel, but you should subscribe anyway and bye. And be sure to become a member. For $5 a month, they get the members-only podcasts and exclusive videos that only members get. Thanks so much for your support. No